The Dollar Tree has been rolling out some of their fall decorations and fall crafting items. I've put together some of my favorite fall DIYs all in one video to give you a lot of inspiration and ideas. And I hope it gets you excited to start decorating for fall. I know I'm excited, so let's get started. For the first project, I wanted to paint a buffalo plaid pattern on this wooden pumpkin that I found at the Dollar Tree. So I started by removing the things from the front of the pumpkin and then I filled in the holes with a little bit of spackling just to kind of help camouflage them a little bit so you wouldn't see them through the paint job. So I'm going to try to explain this as quickly as I can because painting buffalo plaid is actually pretty easy, but I do have a more in-depth um, painting technique for buffalo plaid on a video I did around Christmas time, so I'll make sure that I link that in the description box below. So basically you want to start, you need three different shades of paint. So you need a light color, a dark color, and a medium color. Now if you don't have three shades, you could just use two colors, a light color and a dark color, and then mix them together to make the medium color. So you want to start by painting whatever piece you're doing with the lightest color first. Next you want to take either some painter's tape or some washi tape and you want to create vertical stripes across your project. So I'm using some washi tape here and you can see I'm just laying a piece down and then using a piece as a spacer to lay the second one down. And then once you have all the stripes going across your project vertically, you just want to paint in with the medium color. Once the vertical stripes are painted, you can remove the tape and then let it dry and then you can move on to creating horizontal stripes. So I always like to start in the center of the project, whether I'm doing vertical or horizontal stripes, because I just think it looks better if the stripes are a little bit centered on the project. And it's the same thing for the horizontal. I laid a piece down, then used a piece as a spacer and then continued on with my stripes. And then once all of that is in place, you're going to go ahead and paint the horizontal stripes in the same medium color that you used for the vertical stripes. Now once your horizontal stripes are painted, you don't want to peel the tape off. You want to leave that on. And I'm trying to show you here on the camera, but it's kind of hard to see. Um, so you're going to go back through and everywhere that you had the vertical tape placed originally, you're going to put that tape back over it. So. In person, you can see where the lighter squares are, and that's where you're gonna place your tape. Everywhere that there's a lighter square from originally, whenever you put the vertical tape down, that's where you're gonna put the tape back down again. So now you're gonna have your original vertical stripes taped off, and you're gonna have your horizontal stripes still taped off. And once you have all the tape in place for the vertical stripes, then you're gonna go through with your darkest color and paint the whole project. And now that you have all the dark paint on, you can go ahead and remove all of the painter's tape off of your project to reveal your new buffalo plaid pattern. Now, I know I went through this pretty quickly, so like I said, I do have a, a slowed down version on a Christmas video, and I'll make sure that I link that below if you need a little bit uh, more explanation. Next, I wanted to create a little banner that said fall to drape across the front of the pumpkin. So I'm taking some chipboard and I'm cutting it down to pieces that are two and a half inches by four inches. And chipboard is basically the same material that cereal boxes are made out of. This chipboard is a little bit thicker than that, but you could definitely still use that. Or you could even just use cardstock. Um, if you're gonna use cardstock, I would probably double it up though, just to make it a little bit thicker. Now the way that I like to create banner shapes, I take my ruler and I find the center of my piece. So in this case it was an inch and a quarter. And I measured up about a half an inch and I just put a little dot there. So then I cut straight up from the bottom to that center dot and then I cut from each corner up to meet that center dot as well. And then that gave you that nice little banner shape across the bottom. Now the ruler that I'm using is a Tim Holtz ruler and it actually has measurements that go in both directions so it makes it really easy for this but you could use a regular ruler too or if you're interested in the Tim Holtz ruler I do have that linked in my description box below. Once I had all four of my banner shapes cut out I just took a hole punch and I punched a hole in each corner of each of the banner shapes so that I had something to string it through. Then I mixed together some of the agave color and the plaster color by Waverly to create a lighter teal color and I gave each of the banners one quick coat of paint. 
Then I decided to wrap the stem of the pumpkin with some jute twine. So I started on the back, which technically was the front of the old pumpkin, but I had covered that up with craft paper just to cover up that old design and to make sure that the glitter that was on it wasn't getting everywhere. And then I just took my time and I kind of wrapped the jute cord the whole way up to the top of the stem of the pumpkin. I decided to decorate the front of the pumpkin just a little bit more. So I'm using some random pieces of greenery that I have left over from some old floral stems. And then I'm actually gonna repurpose that metal leaf that came on the front of the pumpkin originally. And I just glued them all to the top of the stem and then I added a little jute bow to finish everything off. I used my Cricut to cut out the letters for the word fall, but you could always use letter stickers from the Dollar Tree or Michaels, or if you're good Hand, letter, hand lettering you could always do that too but if you do have a Cricut this is the font that I used for these letters so I took some jute twine and this one is a little bit thinner than the stuff that I used for the um, top of the stem and I just strung it through the letters on the word so I always start on the right hand side and I go down through the first hole and then I come up through the hole on the left hand side and then I just left a tiny little bit of a gap between each letter now if you're not using the same wooden pumpkin that I did you might have to adjust the size a little bit on your banners to make sure that they fit across um, the front of whatever project you're doing but these this was a good size for across the front of this pumpkin that I did to finish everything off on my pumpkin I took some black clothespins that I already had in my stash and I just hot glued them to each corner of my pumpkin so that I had something to clip my banner into and here's a look at how this pumpkin turned out I wanted to create a, a hanging garland for in my dining room So I got a pack of these wooden pumpkins from the Dollar Tree And I know I wanted to spell out the word harvest and there's actually eight pumpkins in a pack So I knew that I would only need seven So I took seven of the pumpkins and I gave them one quick coat of the moss color by Waverly And I didn't worry about painting the stems with the moss color because I knew I was going to paint that with a different color later on I love how the gourds and pumpkins that are out this time of year have sort of a speckled look to them so I wanted to give that texture to these pumpkins I started out with two different shades of a yellow chalk paint the one was maize by Waverly and I'm not sure what the other color was called it was something I got at Michaels but it was a little bit lighter than the maize color and to be truthful you didn't really need two colors <laughs> because you couldn't really tell the difference in the two colors. I probably could have just used the darker color and been fine. But I'm using an old toothbrush and I'm just dipping it in the paint and then running my thumb along the bristles to create a little bit of a paint spatter across the pumpkins. And it gives it that really cute speckled look that a lot of the natural gourds and pumpkins have this time of year. Then to finish off the painting of these pumpkins, I'm just using the mineral color by Waverly and that's the color that I chose to use on the stems of the pumpkins and I just did kind of a a little bit of a rough paint job across the top of the stem I wasn't too worried about having a straight smooth line because I knew I was eventually going to use something across the top of the pumpkin to hide that hole anyway but I just wanted a little bit of a differentiation between the pumpkin and the stem so that's why I chose the mineral color to create the banners for on this garland, I'm using some of this wider burlap that I got at Michael's. This is something that they have year round and it's always in the floral section. It's about five inches wide and what I like about it is that the edges are kind of uh, binded together so whenever you cut it, it doesn't fray along the edges. So to get started, I cut out seven pieces that were eight inches long. And once I had all of the pieces cut, I could start creating a channel that would run along the top of the burlap. So using my ruler, I lined it up with the edge of one side of the burlap and I ran a line of hot glue about two inches down from the end. And then I folded it over and that created a little channel across the top that I'll be able to slip some rope through. 
Now, to decorate this a little bit farther, I decided to take some of this lace ribbon from the Dollar Tree. And I wanted to kind of hide that line of hot glue because it does seep through the burlap, which is why I have my silicone mat there. And then um, I was careful to use my spatula because it oozes through so much I didn't want to burn myself. So I laid a piece of the lace ribbon down on top of the uh, banner where you could see the hot glue. And then to finish off the ends, I just tied a little bit of jute twine around each end. And then I dovetailed the ends of the lace just to give it a little bit more character and to almost make it look like it has a little tassel hanging off the side. I repeated that same process on the other side of the banner and then I repeated the whole process on the remaining six pieces of burlap. After I had the lace tied on both ends, I just folded the whole thing in half and I cut from the corners up to the center to create a little bit of a larger dovetail and to give it a little bit more character on the bottom. I decided to use my Cricut to cut out the letters for the word harvest and I glued one letter on each pumpkin. Now I like to use my Cricut because I'm not very good at hand lettering but that's definitely an option you could do or you could even just use some stickers that you could get at the Dollar Tree or any other kind of craft supply store. And I did use um, some cardstock that was actually like a parchment paper so it kind of gave it a really neat look. It's kind of hard to tell on camera but there's a little bit of variation in the cardstock itself so it made the letters look really neat on these pumpkins. Instead of doing just a a typical bow for at the top of these pumpkins to cover up that hole I decided to take some of this uh, ribbon that I found at the Dollar Tree and I just tied it in a knot in the center and then instead of dovetailing the ends I cut it in the opposite direction to create a point on each end and then I think that way it kind of made it look like it was a little bow tie almost so I made seven of those and I just hot glued, glued those to the top of each pumpkin to attach the pumpkins to the burlap I cut out squares of cardstock that were two and three quarters by two and three quarters. That way I could lay it down on the table first, then put the banner over it, add some hot glue, and then I could lay the pumpkin right on top. And then that way the burlap was kind of sandwiched between the pumpkin and the cardstock and it wasn't going to make a mess by getting hot glue everywhere. To give you an idea of how you could make this more modern or boho looking, I did the same technique but I used a piece of canvas material that I had taken off of one of the wooden canvases from the Dollar Tree. And I did the same banner shape and I just placed a simple ribbon across the top and instead of painting the pumpkin I just stained it with the antique wax. To string this garland together I found it the easiest way to get the rope through that little channel because the weave and the burlap was kind of wide was to add just a little bit of hot glue on the end of the rope and kind of roll it together and then I used a safety pin and ran that through the end of the rope and then I was able to use the safety pin to fish it through the top of each banner. I had one of these wall shelves from the Dollar Tree in my stash. They sold these a while ago. I haven't seen them for a while. But if you don't have one of these, you could just use any kind of uh, piece of scrap wood. These shelves come with a hole drilled in each corner and a piece of rope to hang it with. But since I wasn't going to actually use it as a shelf, I wanted to make a sign out of it. I decided to fill in each of the holes with some spackling that I also got at the Dollar Tree. Once I had all my holes filled in, I decided to give this one coat of the moss color. Now, this is an actual wood grain on here. It's kind of a laminate sheet that's over the top, but it does have a little bit of texture to it. So that's why I only decided to give this one coat because I wanted just a little bit of that texture to show through. And I did brush a little bit of paint along the sides as well. Now, if you were really going for a real rustic farmhouse vibe on this, you could always distress it a little bit with some um, sandpaper or even another color paint, but I decided to keep it just a little bit more sleek and just do one coat of paint. Then I took one of these metal words from the Dollar Tree. They come in a three pack and they usually have them for every holiday and for the fall season, 
the pack says thankful harvest and blessed so i took the word thankful and because it is metal i had to give it two coats of the plaster color by waverly I decided to create a scrappy bow for on my sign. So I went through my stash and I gathered up all the ribbons that I had that were black and white or burlap. And I cut them to about seven inches long and some of them I dovetailed on the ends, some of them I cut to a point and some I just slant cut on the ends. Then I started by taking the widest ribbons that I had and laying them down in an X pattern. And I kind of tried to alternate if I was using a burlap piece and then a black and white piece. And I went from the widest ribbon I had to the narrowest ribbon. And I also had a couple trims too that weren't necessarily a ribbon. So I didn't really have to cut a fancy end on those ones. So once I had everything layered up how I liked it, I took a piece of jute and I should have laid that down first, I think, but I took a piece of jute and I tied that around the center and I kind of cinched it all up so it made the ends flare out on this scrappy bow. To decorate my sign, I started by hot gluing the word thankful to the one side of the sign. I kept it more to the right hand side and I did place it on a slight angle. And when you do this, just be careful because that metal gets pretty hot pretty quick from that hot glue. Then for the left hand side of the sign, I took three ribbons that I had used in that scrappy bow also, and I laid them out over the sign and I laid the burlap ribbon down first and then I did the polka dot ribbon on each side and I left a little bit of a gap in between each of the ribbons and I just hot glued it down and then wrapped it around the back and hot glued it in place on the back. Now this is where I would stop if you're going for more of a modern look to your decor because I think just the simple ribbon wrapped around the sign without a bow kind of gives it more of that modern um, sleek look or even depending on what kind of colors you choose or what kind of textures of ribbons you choose it could also look more like a boho piece as well. So once I had the background ribbons glued in place I glued my scrappy bow on and then I took a couple um, pieces of fall decor from a pack that I had got at Walmart. I used an acorn and a few berry picks just to give it a little bit more of those traditional fall colors because there was so much neutral on the sign. I just wanted a few pops of color. next project was inspired by this leather leaf garland that I saw at Hobby Lobby about a month ago. I'm using two sheets of the faux leather that the Dollar Tree had sold. Um, these sheets were made to use with a Cricut. So I chose the brown and the white. And then I know the Dollar Tree always sells nautical rope, but I found this thinner rope on Amazon and I just compared it there so you could see how it was just a little bit thinner than the nautical rope that the Dollar Tree sells. But you could definitely still use that too. So to get started with the garland, I measured out about 12 inches from the end of the rope. And that's where I decided to start my first leaf. Now, like I mentioned before, I went ahead and cut leaves out using my Cricut, but if you don't have a Cricut, you could find a leaf shape that you like online and just trace it and cut it out of the leather. Or if you didn't have leather, you could also do the same thing just using felt or any kind of material or even the silk leaves that you can find on the faux plants I think would look really cute as a garland too. So I'm just hot gluing the stems of these leaves right to this nautical rope and I'm using my ruler just to make sure that I have them all spaced out evenly. I think I went about four inches in between each stem. Now the stems on my leaves were long enough that I could just uh, kind of roll them right around the edge of the rope there and the picture I showed you it had a little bit of a, a Metal detail on it. I think it was like a button or a clasp But the leaves that I cut out with my machine they weren't quite wide enough to do that But if you were going to trace them and do your own leaf you could definitely make the the leaf stems wide enough that you could add like a little fake button on them, too 
To give a nice finished edge to this garland, I decided to measure down about two inches from the edge and then I folded it in half and I glued the two ends together. And then that way it created a little bit of a loop on the end. And then I just took some of my regular jute twine and I kind of wrapped it around a about a half an inch from where the two ends met. That way it kind of gave it a nice finished look. And then this way, since there's a loop on the end, if you wanted to hang it up, you could, or since the end is just nice and finished, if you were just draping it across something, you would have a nice finished edge instead of just the edge of the raw rope. And then I just went ahead and repeated that on the other side of the garland too. So what's great about this garland is that you can make it any length you want. And then, like I said, if you didn't have the leather, you could use felt, you could use a bunch of different materials. But I also think just hot gluing the silk leaves that you can find in the fall time on rope would look really pretty as a garland as well. And you could even take it a step farther and kind of wrap a set of those fairy lights around the rope too. I think that would look really pretty too. Project. I'm using one of these 12 by 12 canvases that I found at Michael's. So I started by removing the canvas material from the frame itself and I'm just going to be using the frame for this project. Now since I knew I was going to be adding another backing to this frame, I didn't have to remove most of the staples off the back, but I did make sure that I removed all of the material from the back. Once I had all of the canvas material off of the frame, I decided to give it one really good coat of the plaster color by Waverly. Now sometimes I do like a dry brushing on a frame like this, but I really wanted more of an opaque coverage. So I laid it on pretty thick, but I did only give it one coat and I made sure that I did the top, the sides and the inside of the frame as well. For the inside of the frame, I found these really cool self-adhesive wall tiles at the Dollar Tree. And they're kind of a, a little bit of a matte gray. They're not super shiny, but I wanted to pop that pattern out just a little bit more. So I'm using the same plaster color and I'm just doing a dry brush technique all over the surface of this tile. That way most of the color kind of got on the raised areas of the tile and it created more of a shadowy effect where it was embossed. My Dollar Tree has finally started putting out more of their fall decor and I found these really cool metal pumpkins there. And I really loved the plaid pattern that was already on this pumpkin. The only thing I didn't love about it was the raffia bow at the top. So I decided to keep this DIY pretty simple by leaving the pumpkin pretty much how it was. And I just kind of added in a little bit of my own greenery. And then I did a little bit of a lace bow out of some of the lace that you can find at the Dollar Tree just to change up the embellishments on the pumpkin a little bit. To make the backing for this tile a little bit more sturdy, I'm taking a piece of foam board from the Dollar Tree. And since this tile is self-adhesive, I just laid it on the foam board and then I used my utility knife to cut it down. Now this tile is about 12 by 12, which is the same size as the frame. So I did have to cut just a little bit extra off the tile itself too, just so it wouldn't hang over the edges of the frame. I was a little bit nervous about using hot glue to attach the backing to the frame because these tiles are plastic and I was afraid it was going to melt it, but it actually held up pretty well. It didn't seem to melt the tile too much. So I just used a little bit of hot glue around the edges of the frame to attach the backing. I think another alternative to using hot glue would be a staple gun. I think that would be a really good choice in this project because then you wouldn't have to worry about the glue melting the tile at all, but I just didn't happen to have a staple gun on hand on this day. To attach the pumpkin to the center of the tile, I added some tumbling tower blocks to the center of the pumpkin because it was raised up a little bit and I wanted more of a surface to glue the pumpkin on. Now I will tell you later on the pumpkin ended up popping off of the tower blocks like the metal just didn't hold very well with the hot glue so I would recommend using some E6000 for this. I knew I wanted to use up this piece of canvas material from the last project. So I took one of these pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. They have a bunch of different kinds of pumpkins. They have these ones that have this really cute print on them. Some of them just have uh, an orange front. Some of them are just plain wood, but I had an extra one of these ones in my stash, so I decided to use it up. 
So I started by taking the little metal leaf that was off the front of the pumpkin. It was pretty easy to pull out and I cut off the jute hanger that came with it. Then I laid it down on the piece of canvas and I laid it down on the side that had the coating because I wanted the back side of the canvas to show on this pumpkin. And I just traced around it with a permanent marker and then I cut it out and I cut kind of on the inside of the line that I drew. So I cut about probably not even an eighth of an inch towards the inside of the line. That way I knew it would fit better on my pumpkin. I wouldn't have so much overhang. I was afraid that if I used hot glue to attach the canvas material to the pumpkin that you would see the little bumps and lines from the hot glue underneath the canvas material. So I decided to use my art glitter glue instead and it did a really good job because I was going back and forth whether I should use this or if I should use like a fabric glue but I decided to use this at the end. And I always have that linked in the description box too if you're ever interested in that. So this um, canvas material fit pretty well on this pumpkin. I was, I was pretty pleased with the fit on it. I didn't really have much overhang and there wasn't really a gap anywhere around the outside. So once I had the canvas in place, I wanted it to dry really well before I, I did anything else to it. So I decided to move on to the stem. Now, I've wrapped a lot of pumpkin stems in my day with jute twine and for some reason, this one was just such a pain in the butt. So I started um, by hot gluing a little bit of the jute on the front and then I thought I would be able to just wind it up like I do a normal stem, but I think because of the shape of this stem, I actually had to hot glue almost every row down. So once I had all of the jute in place, there was a little bit of seepage from the hot glue and the jute itself. I guess maybe because I'm coming to the end of the roll, I don't know, it just seemed really frayed. So I did take my lighter to it to burn off um, some of the frayed edges and then then to kind of melt off some of that glue that seeped out. So in the end, it turned out really well. I liked how the stem looked, but I kind of wish I would have just painted it because it was such a pain. Next, I decided to create a band on this sign because I wanted this sign to say, hello pumpkin. I've been seeing that phrase a lot around and I think it's really cute. So I just took my painter's tape and I decided to create a band with some paint. So I used the moss color by Waverly and the space that I blocked out was about two and a half inches and I just put my painters tape down uh, to give me a guide as to where I needed to paint and while I was painting I kind of painted away from the edges of the tape if that makes any sense because I was afraid that it would seep underneath the painters tape so I was just kind of filling in the center and then when I got to the edge of the painters tape I kind of pulled away from the edge so that I wasn't like jamming my brush underneath the tape by accident. I had this piece of faux leather in my stash. This actually came from the Dollar Tree. I found this a while back when they um, started bringing out materials for cutting machines like crickets. So I decided to create a little bit of a band piece out of this faux leather and I think mine measured about five inches by an inch and a half. So I just traced on the back so you wouldn't see the lines of the marker and then I cut that band piece out. I knew I wanted this leather piece to look like it was kind of hammered on or something like that onto this pumpkin and I have this huge roll of these little gold dots in my stash that I got on clearance from Hobby Lobby. So I cut two of those off and I hot glued one to each end of the leather. Now obviously not everybody's going to have these things in their stash but you could easily just use thumbtacks. You could cut the tack part off of a thumbtack or you could even use brads and cut the little prongy parts off the brad and do the same thing. Or you could even use something else like little buttons. I think that would look cute too. Like I mentioned earlier, I wanted this sign to say hello pumpkin. So I used my Cricut to cut the word pumpkin out for on the piece that I painted on the pumpkin. But I knew on this leather piece I was gonna write the word hello and I decided to step out of my comfort zone <laughs> and try a little bit of hand lettering. And I just wanted some simple letters so I felt safe in doing this but I still decided to write it in pencil first. And then I went back through with my permanent marker and I kind of traced over my pencil lines with the permanent marker to write out the word hello. I cut the word pumpkin out of some black vinyl using my Cricut. Now I didn't use any particular font for this. I actually just searched pumpkin in Cricut Design Space and a bunch of different uh, pumpkin patterns came up and then the word pumpkin also came up a few times. And I liked this one so I decided to use this one. 
Now I've tried to use vinyl on this canvas material before and it was really a struggle but I think because I painted it first the vinyl really took well to the paint. So I decided to place the word pumpkin down first so that I could have kind of a guide as to where I wanted to put my little leather tag and I kind of offset it a little bit and then I just added that to my sign. I think this would be a great place to stop if you were more into like a simple modern kind of look but since I like the farmhouse style a little bit better I decided to add just a few sprigs of some fall greenery to the top with um, a little bow that I tied out of some thinner nautical rope. I took one of these carvable foam pumpkins from the Dollar Tree and you can see there's a little bit of a circle around the top so I used that as my guide and I just took my utility knife and I started cutting around that circle and the inside of these pumpkins are hollow so I knew this would be perfect for a sort of flower arrangement once I had the hole cut out of the top of the pumpkin I took the plaster color by Waverly and I had to give this two coats because I wasn't going to add anything to the outside of this pumpkin. I just wanted to create a really neutral decor piece. So I needed to use two coats of the plaster color to cover up all of that orange. But this is where you could customize it to fit your style. You could paint it any color you wanted, or if you like to use the traditional colors of fall, you could just keep it orange as well. I wanted to create a platform for my pumpkin to sit on. So I took a piece of the square box art from the Dollar Tree, and I just started by removing the little hanger that was on the back, and then I kind of peeled the paper off the front of the box as well. Now the neat thing about this box is it was already painted white around the outside so I didn't really have to do much around the outside of the box and I probably could have just given the top of this a coat of paint because I knew I was going to be covering it up anyway but I decided to you know make my life hard and try to get the paper off the top instead. So a little tip I have is I usually use like a little bit of a scraper to start scraping the paper off but if you wet it a little bit it's actually a lot easier to kind of peel off whenever it's a little bit damp. So here you can see I got most of the top of the box off using my scraper or my sanding block. So to cover up the top of this box I decided to use some of these super jumbo craft sticks that I found at Walmart and if you've been to my channel before you know that my favorite way to cut craft sticks is with a paper trimmer. So I measured the top of my box and this one measured about five and seven eighths so I cut all of my craft sticks down to five and seven eighths and then that way I can glue them across the top to give it sort of a shiplap look. Now I got really lucky with this piece of box art because I didn't have to cut any of of the sticks down uh, widthwise. They, I think six of them fit perfectly across the top of this box. So I just started by lining one of the sticks up on the edge of the box and then as I glued each stick down I just made sure that I pushed it up tight against the stick that I had laid down previously. Like I said before I got lucky with this box because the sides were already painted white so to get the top to blend in just a little bit more I decided to use that same plaster color and I just did a little bit of dry brushing over the sides of the sticks and across the top. Now if you're new to crafting dry brushing is just whenever you dip your brush in paint and then you dab most of it off on a paper towel and go lightly over your surface and it kind of gives you that distressed sort of brush stroke look. Then all I had to do was add a little bit of hot glue to the bottom of my phone pumpkin and glue it to the center of my platform. I wasn't sure originally if I was going to put a flower arrangement in the center of this pumpkin or if I was just going to stack something else on top of it. So that's why I went ahead and cut the top off first. So I dug around in my stash and I found a bunch of fall greenery that I had purchased at the Dollar Tree. And I decided to start by making sort of a ring of greenery around the top of the pumpkin. So I'm using a little craft stick here and I'm just poking a hole in the foam first because it it was a little bit easier that way to get the greenery to lay in there. I didn't want it sticking straight up. I wanted it to kind of lay flat out on the sides. So it was a little bit easier to poke that hole first and then just add a little bit of hot glue and put my greenery through there. 
After I had all my greenery in place, I decided that I wanted to kind of make a pumpkin topiary. So I had this neutral colored pumpkin in my stash. It came from a flower arrangement, I think from Hobby Lobby maybe a few years ago. But they also sell orange pumpkins at the Dollar Tree that you could use and I just simply hot glued it right to the top. The Dollar Tree have these really cool candy dishes that kind of look sort of chrome like metallic and I think they're kind of neat but I wanted to kind of make it look a little bit more farmhouse so I'm using the plaster color again and I did have to give this two coats now I gave it two coats on the inside and the outside because I knew you would be able to see a little bit of the underneath if it was sitting on a shelf or something like this now because this is plastic the paint isn't gonna stay very well but I was okay with that because I wanted to have a kind of distress look on it anyway so I was okay with just having a few chips here and there but if you want more of a solid coat I would probably recommend using um, a spray paint with this type of plastic now I love how this just looks painted white but like I said before I knew it was gonna chip a little bit because it was plastic and I was gonna be putting candy in it or throwing my keys in it or something like that so I decided to take my sanding block and I'm just going around the edges a little little bit and it does bring out a little bit of that underlying color so since this one was kind of a rust color if you look really close you can see a little bit of that rust poking through and underneath it was just a silvery color so I actually really like how that looked I, I like those little colors kind of popping through that white and it kind of gave it that modern distressed kind of look I wanted to keep the embellishments on this dish pretty simple because I really like the dish how it looks on its own. So I grabbed a couple pieces of greenery and a couple pieces of raffia and I'm just kind of creating a little bundle out of them. And I'm using some jute cord and I'm wrapping it around the bottom to make it look like a little bit of a miniature bouquet, I guess. And then after I had it wrapped and trimmed down to how I liked it, I just glued it onto the stem of the dish. I was in the Dollar Tree I was looking at their fall flowers and I noticed these mini mums there and the way they had them displayed they looked like a really pretty ombre so I thought oh that'd be a great idea for a wreath so I took one of these floral foam wreath forms that you can find at the Dollar Tree they're about nine inches around and I started out by poking holes all through the top and the sides and the inside of the wreath form just to make it a little bit easier to stick the flowers in. Um, I, I ended up having to add some more holes to it, but this kind of gave me like a base to start with. So then to cover up the green part of it so it wouldn't show in between the flowers, I decided to take some of this brown burlap ribbon that I found at the Dollar Tree and I just kind of spiral wrapped it the whole way around the wreath form. Now this burlap ribbon, I'm not really sure if it's actually that great of a deal for a dollar because it's only about six feet long. So I did end up using one whole roll for this wreath, but I think if uh, you shopped around and looked for some other burlap, you might be able to find something that's a little bit more cost effective if you're going by like price per foot but this worked out for this and I already had it on hand so it worked out so I just added a little bit of hot glue when I started and I wrapped it around pretty loosely and then I glued it at the end now since I was creating an ombre I wanted to put some of the flowers on first so I kind of had a guide of where I needed to go with each section of flowers and since there were five different colors of flowers that I was able to pick up I just kind of spaced them around the wreath form and I kind of visualized a star shape in my head so that way where each color transitioned was the point of a star and that kind of gave me a guide to be able to equally space these around um, as I went from color to color 
And then you can see the holes through the burlap there. So I just kind of had to move some of the strands of the burlap aside and then I would add a little bit of hot glue. And I did take all of the flower heads off of the stems just to make it a little bit easier. And then after I had kind of filled in where I had already poked the holes, if there were if there was a little bit of too much burlap showing, then I went back through and I filled in um, with a few more flowers as needed. And I kind of went the whole way around the wreath except for the very back side. That way it could lay a little bit flatter once it was hanging. So here's the wreath as I moved through all the colors. I filled it in. I, I made it pretty full because I had bought quite a few bunches of flowers. So to be able to hang this wreath, I took some burlap ribbon that I already had on hand. And I think this came from Michael's around Christmas time. And it's about two and a half inches wide. So I created a hanger just by looping a piece of the burlap through the, the center of the wreath. And then I tied it at the top with a little bit of jute twine and I dovetailed the ends. That way it kind of added just a little bit of interest to the hanger of this wreath. And then I created just a simple bow using uh, another type of burlap ribbon. It's actually the same material, but this ribbon is only about an inch and a quarter wide. So I just did a simple like loopy bow and I tied that on to the top of this burlap hanger. And then I made sure that I went ahead and dovetailed the ends of this bow too, just to make it look a little bit more finished. I love how this wreath turned out and I love how it uses the traditional colors of fall. Even though I like to add some pops of different color when I decorate, I still always go back to the traditional colors. Let me know in the comments what kind of colors you like to use when you decorate. So for the second project, I took two of these wooden pumpkins that I had got at the Dollar Tree last year. I think they have them out again this year. I, I'm not really sure because I, my Dollar Tree hasn't <laughs> really had the best selection of fall items this year. But I just started by removing the raffia bow that was already on it and the twine hanger that came on it. So I wanted to give these just a little bit of color. So I'm using the plaster color by Waverly. And I'm going to start out by just kind of painting in the indented areas of the pumpkin. I wasn't too worried about the parts of the pumpkin that were raised up because I was going to cover those up later with something else. So for one of the pumpkins, I just kind of painted in between those raised areas. But for the second pumpkin, I ended up painting the whole thing with this plaster color. And I just gave it one coat of paint because I didn't mind if a little bit of that wood grain showed through. I found these really cool removable tile decals at the Dollar Tree and they had a bunch of different patterns and prints on them. But I really liked this copper colored one that I had found and I knew I wanted to put this on this pumpkin. So I laid it down on the top of my pumpkin to start and I was going to use my bone folder just to kind of trace the the lines of the raised part of the pumpkin but it ended up poking through the tile itself because it's just kind of a thicker paper it's not really it's not really anything that is very sturdy so once it started to rip from my bone folder I decided just to go ahead and use my utility knife then so that those edges would look a little bit cleaner and I just ran the utility knife along the edges of where the pumpkin is raised up so that I could cut the spaces in between out and then that way this tile is only going to be on those raised pieces of the pumpkin. Next, I decided to distress this pumpkin just a little bit. So I'm using the Antique Wax by Waverly and I'm using a baby wipe and I just kind of dabbed it in the wax and then dabbed off the excess and then I'm wiping it all over the pumpkin. And then once I have wax all over the pumpkin, then I'm gonna use the clean side of the baby wipe to wipe most of it back off. That way again, it kind of gave it just a little bit of a shadowy look, but there weren't any like harsh lines or anything from distressing like if you would use a paintbrush or something like that and I did do that to both pumpkins and you can see this second pumpkin here I didn't add a decal to because I knew you wouldn't really be able to see it um, from how I'm putting the centerpiece together so I didn't bother adding a decal to this one I just kind of kept it plain so once I had both of my pumpkins prepped I thought I had one of those wooden crates that you can find at the Dollar Tree and I was gonna glue that in between the two pumpkins so that I could 
make a little flower arrangement, but I did not have one of those wooden crates on hand. But what I did have were these uh, few pieces of different palette things that they sell at the Dollar Tree. So I decided to take one of the longer palettes and I glued two of the shorter palettes on each end. And then that way it kind of created a base that I knew I would be able to attach both of my pumpkins to and also put some floral foam on the inside. So I just used hot glue for this. I mean, I always use the Gorilla Glue Sticks and they always seem to have a good hold. So I figured the hot glue would be fine for this project, but you could use wood glue or you could even use a staple gun and just staple these together. But the easiest step obviously would just be to use a crate that's already put together for you. But like I said, I didn't have one. So I had to improvise. Then so that the crate wouldn't stand out too much from the pumpkins, I decided just to dry brush a little bit of the plaster color over it. I knew you wouldn't really be able to see it much, but I wanted it to blend in a little bit with the pumpkins. Then to attach the pumpkins to the front and back of this, I just ran a little bit of hot glue along the three sides and then I kind of centered the pumpkin um, along the, the front side of this crate. And you can see a little bit of it sticking out, but I didn't really mind that too much. And that's why I decided to put a little bit of the plaster color on there too, because it kind of helps blend it in. And then I just repeated that on the back side too, to attach the second pumpkin. I decided to keep the decorations on this pretty simple because I really love the the embellishment of the the tile that I used for the front of the pumpkin so I really wanted to show that off so I'm just using some of this berry garland that they always have at the Dollar Tree and I cut a few pieces and I kind of wrapped them around a paintbrush just to make them look a little bit spirally and I added them to the top of the pumpkin and then I hot glued a little burlap bow onto the top of it. I think this is one of my favorite projects that I've made for fall so far this year. And I really hope I can find more of these wooden pumpkins at the Dollar Tree because I would love to make these as gifts for my family. Project. I'm using one of these um, canvases from Michaels. Now this one's pretty large. It measures about 10 inches by 20 inches which I think is a great size, especially for something like a gallery wall, because it's nice to have different size frames whenever you're building something like that. So to start, I'm just gonna do what I normally do with canvases, and I'm gonna cut the canvas from the frame, but I'm gonna keep the canvas because I'm gonna use it later on in the project. Once I had all the canvas material removed from the frame, I decided to give it one coat of the truffle color by Waverly. Now you can see there's still some staples on the front side of this canvas just in the corners. Uh, that didn't really bother me. I don't mind having a little bit of kind of a uniqueness to my frames, but if that's something that would bother you, you could easily remove those with a screwdriver and a pair of pliers. But I just gave this one coat and I laid it on pretty thick. Uh, a lot of times I don't mind if some of the wood shows and I really didn't this time, but I wanted there to be more paint than wood showing. So I gave it one really thick coat of paint. While my frame was drying, I started working on the pumpkins that I wanted to put inside the frame. Now these pumpkins I had in my stash, they're from the Dollar Tree last year. And I don't know if they're gonna come out with these again this year or not. My store hasn't really had a good selection of fall items yet, so hopefully they'll bring these back because I really like the shape of these pumpkins. Now I'm gonna add scrapbook paper to the front of these, but the edges, I wanted the color on the edges to match, so that's why I'm painting just the sides and the edges with the plaster color by Waverly. And I ended up only giving these one coat each. And you could see there in the beginning, they, there was like a small raffia bow on the front of the pumpkin and I removed that as well. And you can see I did get a little bit of paint on the stems, but I wasn't too worried about that because I knew I could cover that up later. I had this collection of scrapbook paper in my stash. The collection's called Fall is in the Air by Echo Park. So I went through and I picked out three of the patterns that I liked the best for my pumpkins. I knew I needed one piece for each pumpkin that measured four by six. So what's great about this, since it's double-sided paper, if you didn't want to cut three separate sheets, you could always just cut three pieces from one sheet of 12 by 12 paper and then just alternate the pattern. But I have so much scrapbook paper in my stash, I didn't mind cutting a little bit of it down. 
Next, I'm using my favorite paper glue. It's the Art Glitter Glue. And I always have that linked in the description box below. But I love this glue because it, it doesn't warp scrapbook paper and it also dries pretty quickly. So I just laid the paper right on top of the pumpkin and I made sure that there was a little bit of, of a border the whole way around. And then once that was fully dry, Instead of trying to cut around the pumpkin, I just took my sanding block and I sanded off the edges. That way, it kind of gave the edges a little bit of a distressed look too, and it made it a lot easier than trying to cut right up to the edge of the pumpkin. One thing to keep in mind when you're sanding like this is you wanna just sand in one direction. And you're kind of using the corner of the piece of wood along with the sanding block to create that cut on the paper. So you just wanna keep moving your sanding block downward over whatever you're sanding to get the excess paper off. To finish off my pumpkins, I decided just to tie a little jute bow for the top of each of my pumpkins, but I did double up the jute so that it had two layers to it. What's great about the scrapbook collections like that is they always usually come with a cut apart sheet or a sticker sheet. So if you wanted to embellish these a little bit farther, you could always add a few of those things to the center of the pumpkins, but I decided just to leave mine plain. To create a backing for the frame, I cut down a piece of foam core board that was the same size as the frame. And then I took that piece of canvas that I had removed from the frame, and one side of the canvas has a coating on it. That would be the side that you would paint on, and the other side is just kind of um, like an off-white color. It's, it's the canvas material without anything on it. So I decided that I wanted the canvas material side to show on mine. So I'm gluing the foam board to the side that you would normally paint on, the side with the coating. And then once I had that piece of material glued down onto my foam board, I just cut the excess off with scissors. And then before I glued it to the back of the frame, I decided to use my sanding block on the edges of the frame a little bit, just to bring out that wood a little bit more and give it a little bit more of a distressed look. I decided just to use hot glue to reattach the back of my frame, but you could also use a staple gun here too, in addition to the hot glue, just to make it a little bit more secure if you feel like that's something you need to do. But I always have such good luck with the Gorilla Glue sticks that I feel like they, they hold everything into place pretty well. I knew I could trust myself to line the pumpkins up inside the frame vertically because there wasn't a whole lot of space between the top and the bottom, but I wasn't so sure if I could eyeball the center. So I just used my roller to mark a dot where I needed to glue my first pumpkin. And then I just kind of measured out on each side from the center pumpkin so I knew where to uh, glue down the other two pumpkins. I love how this piece came out and I really like using scrapbook paper like that because it's so easy to customize. So if I wanted to give this as a gift to somebody and I knew that they were into a different style or different colors, I could just choose scrapbook papers that would match their personality. You'll have to let me know in the comments what you think of this one. Thanks for hanging out in the craft room with me today. If you like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of my new fall DIYs. Have a great week and I'll talk to you in the next one.